Um, not the one that's so few. Thank you for the presentation. Um, you know, it was interesting, and you mentioned at the end, just want to say, Yale. One thing that both him and a lot of other managers had was 2008 and, and, and this crisis. I wondered how the data reacts. Is it even, even stronger in, in that kind of September, October timeframe? Is it work? What, what did you learn as you went through research of times like that? I'm going, to, I'm going to comment not on the news part of that, but I'll comment on the um, the aspect of volatility and, and what the world saw. By late 2007, summer to late 2007, the volatility of stocks had shifted around. Value stocks did something very peculiar. <laughs> the Russell value index had always been lower volatility than the Russell growth index until 2007, and they crossed. Remember, this is a year before the crisis has really unfolded, and now value stocks are more risky. High dividend yield stocks had gotten to be more risky. Our low volatility portfolios were rolling out of some of the traditional value characteristics and owning high quality names, something like Procter & Gamble or McDonald's, these big cap stable companies. So volatility is very interesting. It seems to see what's coming. How does it do that? How can it see the future? You think about price as a backward looking variable, but it's not. The price today is what the market thinks the stock is worth in the future. So yeah, we have these time series looking backwards, but we're looking at an estimate of the future value of a company. And as that price changes, that's the uncertainty of the future of the company. Price moves up and down, the future of the company is bouncing up and down. So volatility starts to rise for these low quality companies, value companies, high dividend payers. Their volatility starts to increase because the market is saying, I'm not sure you know, that things are going to be looking good a year or so from now. The volatility is a very adaptive, smart, um, smart sort of a measure. The financial sector, which had always been a low risk sector, became a high risk sector at that time. So the portfolios based on this were moving to higher quality, larger cap names, and avoiding high dividend payers and um, uh, some of the financials and really the stuff that was falling apart. Moving on to my Peter, I mean, was there anything in the crisis that you looked at then that, that, that stood out that, that could be a, a template for us to go forward? You know, obviously, it could be interesting ones with Europe and the Sorry. Is there anything that you saw as you looked at 2008, as you look at the crisis that, that impacted your data? Obviously, that was a period of time. It didn't act like the rest of the market has for so long. Well, if, as you go through, you say crisis periods or extreme negative periods, you, you do tend to see that. Um, can you say cyclical performance or, or the way that certain types of, of events uh, are interpreted uh, change? Um, I, I talked a lot about can you say asymmetries, and, and you definitely tend to see that happening. Uh, uh, and, you know, when you look at you know positive sentiment extremes versus negative sentiment extremes. Um, for instance, uh, for positive sentiment extremes, you never seem to matter more. Uh, but when you are in a negative environment, uh, changes. Uh, seem to matter more. So that's just one change that you can see through uh, these type of, of different environments. Um, and, uh, you know, I also should, can you say, just mentioned a relationship uh, where, or uh, an example where a relationship seems to break down. So, so that, that seems to you say, different types of, uh, of, uh, of impacts through, through different types of impacts. Same question on anything that you saw as you're going through the crisis tells you about anything else? Uh, Sort of it, it, yeah, the, the environment does change um, as long as the playing field is level. I think pre high frequency trading is good. Uh, what they've been doing is essentially bending the rules on the way you <coughs> submit trade orders, and I think people have looked the other way. So if you keep if you keep a fair structure, I think that's great for, for everybody. I think you're, you're passing on more information. Now, 
that information changes over time and the message changes over time. Uh, so it, it's always going to evolve. I don't, I don't know how, but uh, I think our systems for combing the data changes the way that we make our decisions, which changes the prices of security. So there is a definitely a positive feedback as the structure changes, the technology for evaluating valuation changes, and then the prices change. Now, um, going on daily, you know, a lot of what we we'll talked today about today is about this this load of information that, that's good, that's coming that you now have at your fingertips, and this sort of this uh, era before big data, and, and we're sort of in this we're getting there, but we're not quite. I mean, what, what do we do in the interim? Given all this information out there, we're not quite capable of doing what we need to do with video, to parts of different mechanisms that deliver us news, and, and we know what we want to be out there, what do we do before we get there? Well, it's basically trying to be smarter to some degree. It's pretty much, uh, people always want to have more data, they always want to have more ability to analyze the data, but there's always going to be the situation which we sometimes call paralysis or analysis, where you've got so much factors, so much uh, information that you're getting lost in this information. So what I feel is happening is that people are getting going to basics to some degree and they want to go to really root cause analysis and find out what actually happening at a really rudimentary level and try to simplify the models as opposed to building super complex models because they find graffiti is really getting into a way of building proper models. And coming to previous conversation, I just want to say that from my perspective, the crisis was actually interesting because um, strategies that people were developing, we, we, we did not software, right? I mean, asking, we, we can monitor the market only by quote to request such kind of talks. And originally, in 2007 or six, it was more like long short equity daily models, and suddenly in 2008, there's a huge uh, trend towards uh, short horizons, one minute strategies, five minute strategies. <coughs> Even the traditional people start to look into short horizons and definitely increase the size of data, but um, that's kind of the story. Interesting. The other thing that we um, touched on but didn't really dive into, I'd like to for a little bit, is the source of news and the source of information. You know, we talked about whether it's positive or negative, but whoever's disseminating that news can be very different. Um, you know, especially if you layer that also with social media, it must be. Um, delivered through Twitter or another means. How do you, we will start with Peter, how do you look at where that information is? Can you say the studies that we have done and, and the products that we have in the marketplace right now are driven by what we call more professional media? Uh, of course, uh, some of that will be uh, initiated to some extent by social media. You have a lot of journalists looking into that now. We are definitely looking internally to, to, to move more into the direction of social media as well. But there are definitely some, some other types of challenges. Uh, you will definitely see more news, uh, sorry, noise in, in social media. Um, and the way you are potentially going to make decisions based on this type of information, I guess, I think will also be very different. Um, you would probably want to aggregate more uh, than you do perhaps do uh, at the, at the, uh, using professional media. Uh, you probably will feel a little bit less comfortable you know, making Trading decision based on, on, on some guy's uh, his, 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 you know has a profile, of, you know Big Buck nineteen eighty seven or something like that. Uh, but there are definitely can you say different meshes that, that can be pulled up. There's something like uh, cloud, uh, which is uh, where you kind of look at the uh, the reach of of certain people. How much are they uh, able to impact? Uh, can you say? Uh, uh, their, their community, how many people are following them, etc. So you can get, can you say, more confidence that way. But uh, the approach, I think, will be will be uh, a little slightly differently. But I we definitely think it's an it's an interesting space, and it's definitely something that that crave a lot of uh, attention right now. Is there anything else have something out of I've got one point, which is as you go deeper into the social media, you have less professionalism. Quality goes down, but the problem of spoof news or pushing the market starts to increase because it's not illegal to say, "Hey, Apple, I just heard, um, you know, they had to shut down a plant overseas." You could say that, and nobody's going to, you know, there's no ethical standard unless you're in our business. There's no ethical standard to prevent you, and you could push the news. So as you go deeper, the quality. Diminishes and, and just for your 
Think about if you know any story in the Times or the Wall Street Journal that you knew somebody in the story, and you read the story and you go, well, they got that wrong. I mean, that's not quite right, right? So it's really peculiar that all the other stories in the paper that day were pretty much right, and this one story that you have intimate familiarity with, with was wrong. That's not the way it is. All of these stories are wrong to some degree. So using news, you're really getting more of like a distribution of some of its true news, some of it's not too far off, and some of it's purely wrong. And, and so you know, make, you, you're not making a decision, all I'm saying is you're not making a decision on pure information. And as you go down lower, that problem escalates. I think definitely as you move into can you say what shows you that looking at more data, there's, there's even a greater uh, need for structuring it in order to make uh, decisions based on it. But as you start to structure, can you say even less structured data? So you can say there is a certain structure to how uh, uh, journalists write their news. And of course, as you move into social media, that, that type of structure will disappear, making it, it, it much more difficult to, to can you say, uh, uh, putting uh, structure to, um, to, to, to these stories. Um, and, uh, but, but, but definitely, and, and, and having that challenge in there, suddenly you, know, you hear a lot about that social media broke a certain story first, or a certain event. But what you often don't hear is that how many times would you have gotten it wrong uh, trading on it. So is this, can you say, precision recall thing, which is not really properly being addressed? I definitely think that there's a lot of news or a lot of information that can be extracted uh, from social media, but there are definitely also uh, another set of challenges that needs to be addressed. Um, yeah. Uh, social media stuff that uh, recently been uh, observed. There's something like experimental biology, there's something called experimental finance. So when you mix social media data with price data, Suddenly, interesting uh, experiments people start to make. When they start to look at the end of the day, uh, systematic trading, especially short horizon trading, it's all based upon some behavior or patterns that people observe. And they start to look into, even if news is false news, but if it moves the market, who cares at the end of the day? So pretty much what they're trying to find out, if there's any patterns which are really with positive uh, feedback, which drive the market. And we met with several investors, and several investors, I would call them, who make tons of returns by simply analyzing tweets and finding out this little, well, usually it's a low cap market, so where they really, like when they see some positive uh, return, positive feedback uh, or what correlation, and they basically invest in this type of really even false news. But the point is that price data combined with news data, that's kind of, it becomes a new, new kind of a foundation for interesting uh, behavioral kind of studies. Just come. Interesting. So a lot of people in this room have been focused on speed, being focused on even if they are high frequency traders, they're focused on being at, at the point of the point of sale, whether it's the point of the information. At some point, though, speed seems like it's been um, almost pushed to zero in, in some senses. As we move on from the speed race or from the arms race, in some sense, where are the other races that you're seeing that emerging that people want information and are, are spending resources to try and find? Yeah, for you. Yeah. That if you had a pile of A here and there were some needles stuck in it and you wanted to find the needles, we've gotten pretty fast at hooking a vacuum cleaner to that with a magnet and finding those needles. But that's not the world. I mean, that's the world of co locating <laughs> servers and, and trading uh, every little tick. But that's not the world. The world of profit is when that pile of A is as big as this room. That's, there's information there, and that scale, and figuring out how to be smart and go through that information. You still have to be fast, but it's a different thing. There's so much information there, you can take a couple of days if you can process that information. I want to open up, does anybody uh, have a question for the panel? With, um, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of people in both long-term investing and even in shorter-term trading use factor 
risk models, such as BARA, for example. Um, and uh, I wonder what the views are on news analytics. Um, I don't think BARA has news analytics as a, as a factor today. Maybe some other vendors, I think maybe Northfield looked at it, but uh, ultimately they wouldn't put a factor in about news unless they thought it truly added to the predictive power of the model. Um, and I wondered what you know views are at, at this, it seems like a pretty early stage in the news analytics field. And, do you think that uh, some kind of news analytics-based factor will ultimately show up in these models and that it would become part of a long-term investor's toolkit, uh, even if just for uh, risk estimation? I, I definitely think that that will be the case uh, at some point. Uh, we're definitely seeing a strong interest in the area. Uh, I do think that the, can you say the, the, the pure risk guys uh, probably haven't got the same resources to allocate at least, or, or they tend to be a little bit later in the game. Uh, that's at least what we're seeing. But the interest is definitely there. Uh, so the question is whether it's a process driven by, by, these, by the risk guys coming up with the factors, or whether it's a process driven uh, from our point of view. That's, that's or the news on these providers. That's, I guess, uh, one of the questions. But, um, I definitely think, uh, you know, uh, over over the coming, uh, I don't know, couple of years, that you will start to see see uh, news-based uh, risk factors uh, turning up in, in different types of uh, models. He, he put up one today. They've got a news index, mm -hmm. and he's got news betas. For a factor model, you need two things: you need an index, and you need the exposure. And so, you know, I don't know if that becomes popular, but that's. That's a, a news factor model right there. Can I ask? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go back to the uh, issue of social media as you know, you know potential source of news. I think we've talked about examples of you know someone tweeting something about you know, the Fox Hall example, or someone you know, <coughs> shut down. There's obviously some short term you know retail level impact on on the price because someone hears about something they hear. About. But when it comes to things, when it comes to uh, the use of social media to, to, be, to basically be the media for, uh, you know, generating news of, of, uh, of propagating news about things like unrest in say, in the Middle East or whatever else, right? I mean, you know, there are. It's, 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 it's possible that these, this traffic, while not necessarily speaking about or, or being focused on a particular type of security or whatever else. Carries information that might impact things like prices and large commodity and things like that. So in situations like that, um, you know, would you have that, you know, certainly from a label standpoint, do you see being able to either expand or you know, or in some way leverage your analytics to try and mine this kind of information from that traffic? We we are definitely aware of social media and also can you say looking at it. Uh, but uh, there are definitely, as I mentioned, some other challenges. But I think there's, there could be a lot of uh, very interesting attacks uh, and valuable information found in, in social media. Definitely, as, as you know, one of the examples that you show, I think if you start to see as a hype around a certain type of, of event in a given region, that might be a good indication and may trigger more comf the comfort uh, in, in the, for the end user wanting to make a trading decision. So it's not necessarily, can you say, based on a single person saying something, but a form, uh, or can you say, a trend forming in a, in a certain environment. I think that's that's probably where uh, it would be very valuable. So, you know, can you say in a more macro type of sense. Um, the other thing that I think could also be interesting, and, and I've heard some, some people that are trading on this type of, of things uh, successfully, that is to have a more, a very, um, specific hypothesis in mind and attacking or basically trying to filter down in some way through all the noise uh, and, and you can say you do that very statistically by having a very uh, targeted approach to it so so, so this guy uh, and, and I can talk about it because he presented at a conference himself on this topic so he said basically said well I try to identify the so-called gurus 
they also have a lot of followers and give stock advice. And basically, then I just trade against them, and then, you know, I make a lot of money doing that. Uh, so, so I think you know the the point that I want to make is that I think that there could be a lot of interesting stuff if you start to go uh, into the more sophisticated approaches. But I think that 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 holds true both for traditional uh, news data and, and social media. That as when you focus on what we tend to call simple events. There's value in that, but it's probably more in the short term. But the true value, or the, the, the most value will start to extract when you form some kind of more uh, uh, sophisticated hypothesis about how things work. Not only really to get greater return, but the signals also t tend to decay more slowly. Um, so, so I think that's really probably what you should do uh, with, with social media and, and try to be much more targeted in your investment. Thank you. Uh, we only have time for maybe one question. I'll start with Ilya here. Um, as we wrap up the conference and you know, we think about um, everything from you know, when it's okay to how much you want computers and models to be doing, how much you want the human brain to be doing versus speed versus news and how it uh, affects how much. What do you want, what should people take away from everything they've heard today as they sort of go back to their, um, you know, to their jobs and their lives? You guys want my advice? Uh, <laughs> sure. Well, I just think that um, in general, the, the creativity is basically what's left for us to do. And uh, new, completely crazy ideas should be explored. And uh, another thing which I'd like to also bring is new way of visualization tools, which are currently not really prevalent. Basically, I feel like this information which we currently create should be also visualized like a different way. Maybe ask more, you know, suggestions of what people need to, I mean, how, how can software come up? Basically be more active. You know, the one advice I can tell people relative to me is be more active with us and ask us uh, questions and ask us for uh, suggestions for better tools. Because we develop software, people develop strategies, we need to work close to each other. That's kind of my advice. Sure. Uh, uh, and it's relevant both to, to you know, very short horizons, but we definitely also find value over the longer horizons. But it very much comes down to how you think about the use of the data. Um, you can definitely get to some very interesting signals that last long and that are, are more, uh, can you say, attractive. If you start to think about specific hypotheses that you want to address, some that are more complex, bringing in more context into the mix, I think that's a that's an important takeaway. And and the other thing is when you start to build your signals or your models, think about all a lot of the symmetries that there are in the data that are most likely driven by different behavioral patterns. Um, yeah, so so. Definitely, you know, trading on use requires uh, an investment in, in time and energy, but the return is, is, is definitely also there. All right. I would just summarize, because I think all of these are, are right, that uh, news is information. Uh, you have, it's a massive amount of information. Uh, you have to adapt and try to learn from that or stay where you are. If you stay where you are, the profits won't be there. Uh, you can still invest a lot and, and basically throw away a lot of money. So you, you have to be much smarter at going at this than you than you've done before. You really have to be creative, and it's really about technology. It's about building the technology that can comb through this massive event information in a smart way, so that you make better products. And that's that, that's the same message I think from all from all of us. And you know, is it a new day? It's, it's always kind of a new day in, in this field, but it seems like to me in the last year or two, we just went up two orders of magnitude. It's just gotten to be a lot bigger. Great, thank you.